In 14.7, we are going to learn to find the extreme values and also the settle points. Now come to extreme values. When we talk about extreme values, there are two types of it. The first type is local extreme values, and the second type is the absolute extreme values. We will start from looking for ex local extreme values. Okay, let's take a look at this one. Here is the definition of what does it mean by local maximum and local minimum. So uh, you can read it by your own, but I'm going to show you using graph because, well, a picture paints a thousand words. What I want to um, highlight to you is that local extrema, they are also called as relative extrema. Now, sometimes we see that uh, they are called as local extremum, uh, maximum, minimum, or maxima, minima, extrema. So what are the difference between these two? Well, take a look here. All these which are ended with A, they are plural. The one that we ended with maximum, minimum, extremum, these are all singular. That's the difference. Okay. Let's take a look at the graph here. Okay. Well, this graph, we can see that there are two peaks here. High peaks here and low peak one. One low peak here. Okay. So these two peaks, okay, these two points, the red points, we call them as local maxima. So you can see them. These two points, they are the highest, they are at the highest position among their neighborhood. Okay. And this point is the lowest point among its neighborhood. So this type of point we call as local maxima, and this is local minimum. But if we look at the whole graph, okay, uh, let's say here is the boundary. Okay, we see that the highest point is this point, and the lowest point is this point. So if that is the case, this point, this local maximum, is also called as the absolute maximum. Okay, and then this point, which is a local minimum, is also called as the absolute minimum. Okay? Now let's take a look here at this blue surface. Okay? We see that there is a maximum here. All right? So at this particular maximum point, okay, you can, you can imagine for minimum point as well. At this particular maximum point, if you put a stick on this surface and you turn around the stick at whatever direction, Okay, either here or here or here or here, you will get that they are all having, uh, well, the stick is horizontal, or I should say they are all having the slope which is equal to zero. Okay, so this is what it is said in the first derivative test. It says fx and fy, they are both zero at the point AB, okay, at the point AB. When A, B, it has an X, R, a maximum or minimum. Okay? So when we want to find extreme values, we start from using these two. Alright? Now, let's come to this one. There is a definition saying, when Fx and Fy are zero, or one or both of X, Fx and Fy do not exist, this particular interior point is a critical point of F. Remember, a critical point is, a, is an interior point. Okay? Well, why we need this definition? Don't forget, we are not only looking for extreme values, we are also talking about set of points. Set of point is also a type of critical point. Now, what does it mean by set of point? Okay, let's take a look at this graph. You can read the definition by your own, but I will show you using the graph here. Now, when we say a settle point, okay, it is a point which it has, uh, it is a maximum and also a minimum at the same time. Okay, let's say here is the x-axis, here is the y-axis, and here is the z-axis. Now, if we cut through using a plane that is parallel to x, z plane, we cut through the surface and we get the curve here. Okay, we get the curve here. Then this point, it's, it is the maximum point. 
But if we have a plane that is parallel to yz plane, and we cut through the surface, okay, we cut through the surface and we get a curve that looks like this, okay, so, sort of like a parabola, okay, a parabola. This parabola, we get a minimum point. So if we look at as a whole, okay, in this direction, we get a maximum, but in this direction, we get a minimum. So this type of point, we call it a settle point. Okay, and remember, when we want to mention about the point, we since it is in three-dimensional system, we are going to write it in three, three of them. That is A, B, and then we find the value of the Z value using F, A, B. Okay, next. Come back to extreme values, okay? When we want to find local extreme values, either it is maximum, local maximum or local minimum, or set of points, we just need to use this second derivative test. Well, it looks complicated, isn't it? That's why I come up with this diagram, okay? We'll take a look here. When we want to find the local extreme values, this is what we call as the second derivative test, the second step and the third step. This is the first derivative test, okay, this one. This is the first derivative test, and these two, they are second derivative test. Well, let's start from here. When we want to find local extreme values, we start by looking for critical point, okay, by taking fx and fy equals to zero. We usually don't use this one. This is just from the definition. And then, after we have found the critical point, we continue with the second derivative test, okay, by looking for the discriminant. This fx, x, fy, y minus f, x, y squared is the discriminant of f, or we call it as Hessian of f, okay? Now, if this discriminant of f, it is negative, then the point we found here, it is a settled point. But if it is positive, then this, this critical point is an extreme, extremum point which we need to continue to look for to ex to determine whether it is maximum or minimum. And lastly, which we do not want to have, if test, uh, if the discriminant is zero. Because if it is equal to zero, it means our test fail. When test fail, it means you can't determine the critical point you found here, it is maximum or minimum or settle point from this test. You have to use other tests. Okay, let's come back to this one. If the point we found here, it is an extremum point, you just need to look back at what is the fxx. If the FFF, uh, fxx is negative, then the point we found here is a maximum point. Okay, but if it is positive, then the point we found here is a minimum point. Okay, let's take a look at this example. Let's say we want to find the local extreme values of the function f x y equals to x y minus two x minus two y minus two x. Oh, sorry, x y minus x square minus y square minus two x minus two y plus four. Okay, and then we start from the first step. That is to look for the first derivative of this function, which is f x and f y. F x, we differentiate this one. We get y minus 2x minus 2 and fy it is x minus 2y minus 2 after we get this 2 make sure we equalize them to 0 and then we simplify them we get y equals to 2x plus 2 and x equals to 2y plus 2, which I label this one as equation 1, and this is equation 2. Then we solve it using simultaneous equation, okay, and we get, well, this one, you can try to do it, and we get at y equals to negative 2, and then x, we get negative 2, and that leads us to one critical point, that is negative 2, negative 2. So we have done with the first step, which is this one, Okay, we have found the critical point. In this case, it's only one critical point. Okay, and then we continue to do the second derivative test by doing this discriminant of f first. Okay, 
which is looking for fxx, fyy, and fxy. Okay? Differentiate this one with respect to x, you get negative 2. Fyy, you differentiate this one with respect to y, you get negative 2. And then you look for fxy, which is differentiating this one with respect to y, get 1. And then find the discriminant, which is negative 2 by negative 2 minus the square of 1. That will give us 3, which is positive. When it is positive, it means negative 2, negative 2, the critical point that we found just now, it is an extreme point. And then we look back to fxx, which is negative 2. Well, negative 2 is negative, so we, we can say that this negative 2, negative 2 will lead us to get local maximum. Now recall, the question is asking us to look for the extreme value of f. So we want to find what is the value of f not stopping here. So substitute x equals to negative 2, y equals to negative 2 into the function, and we get 8. Then only we come to the conclusion saying the local maximum value is 8 at negative 2, negative 2. That this one should be the final answer, should be the conclusion of the question given. So let's take a look at the overall process. First, we start with a critical point, looking for critical point. And then next, we do, uh, we find the discriminant of f. If the, uh, the discriminant is negative or zero, that's the end of the story. Okay. But if it is positive, then we will just continue to look for fxx to find whether it is maximum or minimum. Okay. Then after we found out what is the x and y, we substitute into, back into the f to get what is the f, then we make a conclusion. Now let's take a look at this exercise. Try this question. Okay, this is the graph of this function. Okay, just a guideline for you. Don't look at the graph, you can also solve the question. Try to solve it. Perhaps you want to just pause the video clip. Okay, I will show you the, ans the final answer later. Okay, but at the, mo at the moment, perhaps you just pause it. Maybe after you have done it and check with this value. Okay, so this is the local maximum value. Uh, the answer is local maximum value of this f is 8 at 2, 2. I hope you have found the answer. So next video, we are going to look for the absolute maximum and absolute minimum of the function. Okay, or from a closed region.